So based on the discussions we've had up to now, especially in the last slide, we realize that our transistor has two different and distinct kind of operation behaviors when it deals with large and large signals or like DC voltages uh, and versus when it deals with small signals, small perturbations in the voltages and currents, right? For example, we saw that when I'm changing the base emitter voltage of a transistor, let me actually draw something here. So when I, when I saw that when I'm changing the base emitter voltage and I want to see the changes in the current of the collector, I saw that I see an exponential change, right? As long as my changes in the base emitter voltage are big enough, I'm going to see an exponential change in the collector current. However, if I zoom in and if, if I zoom into a very small section of my exponential uh, curve, and if I limit my changes in the base emitter voltage into a very small range, let's say I just choose this point and I only go left and right by this much, right? A very small amount of voltage. Then I saw that I can actually uh, model the, the, the impact of this change. This is a small change in the VBE, um, basically as a linear kind of a change in the collector current. So these uh, small perturbations are translated into linear, like linearly translated into uh, current perturbations in the collector current. Okay. And we call that, well, the, the ratio between these two, we call it GM. We saw that we, we saw that GM is really the derivative of IC over the VPE. And we only, since we're talking about derivative, we're really talking about very small changes in the uh, base emitter voltage. And that's why we call this basically, this whole thing is small signal. And we saw that as long as this, these changes are small, GM is gonna be equal to IC over VT, right? So we saw two different behaviors, an exponential behavior and a linear behavior. So it means that whenever I'm dealing with a transistor circuit, transistor-based circuit, uh, I have to do kind of like two different analysis. I have to do a DC analysis or biasing analysis to figure out uh, where is my operating point. And I know the importance of that, those analysis because those analysis will tell me that how strong or how well fit my transistor is or how ready my transistor is to do the amplification. And then once I did the bias analysis, I know basically at which point of this curve I'm standing, right? And then after that, I have to do a small signal analysis where I actually have to find out, well, now I have, I don't know, five millivolts perturbation at the input, how much voltage changes I'm gonna have, how much current changes I'm gonna have at the collector, how much voltage changes I'm gonna have at the output, right? So that's a totally different kind of analysis. So for the second type of analysis, we need a different model than what we have seen before. We saw the large signal model, which was a diode, if just as a uh, reminder, so the large signal model looked like this. So I had a diode and I had a current source here, a voltage dependent current source. And this current source was IS exponential of VBE over VT, VBE being here, right? The voltage across this diode, this was emitter, this was collector, and this was base, okay? Now for the small signal, what I'm gonna do to find the model is following this kind of strategy. I'm gonna perturb the voltage difference between every two terminal, for example, the voltage difference between base and emitter, while the third terminal remains at a constant potential. So I'm gonna change BE while keeping collector at constant. Then I'm gonna change, for example, uh, collector emitter voltage while keeping base constant and then collector base voltage while keeping emitter constant. And then in each uh, kind of basically in each of these steps, I'm going to determine the change in the current flowing through all terminals. So when I'm changing, for example, if I'm changing VPE, how my uh, collector current changes, how does my emitter current changes and how, how does my base current changes, right? And then represent these results by proper circuit elements such as well, voltage controlled current sources or resistors, okay? So the first thing I know is that like, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at this circuit and 
this is uh, good news for you is that that's the only circuit we're going to actually analyze. The other two come, the other two steps are basically uh, result in no changes. So this is the only interesting one. So in this circuit, I've kept collector uh, the constant voltage using this battery, and I'm changing the base emitter voltage. I'm applying a very small step. Let's imagine like I don't know a 10 microvolt step or like one millivolt step, right? And I want to know how much change I'm going to have at the collector current. Well, based on all of the discussions that I have had up to now, I know that this change is going to be the delta IC due to this delta VBE, since this is a small perturbation, is going to be GM times delta VBE, right? That's a definition of the GM, right? GM was delta IC over delta VBE, right? So, okay, now I know that what is the uh, change in my current versus change in the voltage. So I'm going to draw my model and... In doing so, I'm going to well define the base terminal. I have my base terminal coming in, and I know that let's draw something similar to what we had before. So this is my voltage-controlled current source. I know that I have a GM times VBE. This is my emitter, same as before. And this is my, um, well, actually, GM is not times VBE, it's times delta VBE, right? It's the changes in the voltage, not the voltage itself, right? So I'm going to have a linear relationship between the changes in this uh, base emitter voltage and the changes in the current of my collector, right? Remember, small signal model is all about changes, not the absolute value. So how the change in one parameter is related to the changes and small, I'm talking about small changes in, in another parameter. So small changes in delta VBE is going to cause small changes in, uh, well, maybe small, maybe large, depending on the slope, but uh, it's going to cause changes in the IC, which are linearly dependent on these delta VBE, and that linear relationship is defined by GM, okay? Since I don't like to call changes every time, I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna translate this to another kind of a version of it where I'm just gonna define this V pi, and I'm gonna tell you in a moment why pi, right? And V pi is just delta VBE, right? So I'm gonna call that change just V pi, right? Nothing more than that. So by the way, this is collector. So my model is going to look like this. So I have the base, I have the V pi, and here I have the same current source, and this is going to be GM V pi, collector, and emitter. Okay, so this V pi is more of a convention. There's nothing much that you need to think about it or like no, you need to know about it. Just the pi is really coming from the fact that this this model that we are trying to develop looks like this, which, well, if you have a good imagination, you can see that it's an inverted pi, right? Like a Greek letter pi. Um, anyway, now there is another thing that happens. So I said that I'm going to do perturbations on my base emitter voltage and look at the changes in the currents. So yes, this is the change in the current of the collector, right? But I also know that the base emitter current is 1 over beta times collector current, right? So really, I have to, so from here, I'm going to get it here, right? So I'm going to redraw this model, or maybe I have to write the equations first, right? I know that uh, delta IB is going to be delta IC divided by beta, right? And since my delta IC is actually GM delta VBE, I'm going to have a change in the delta IB that is GM divided by beta, right? Um, now, since I'm talking about, and this current delta IB is really IBE, right? The current is going from the base to emitter. Since I'm current talking about the voltage of base emitter and the current flowing from base to emitter. So I'm talking really about the same node. So I can really see that this is really, this can be modeled as a resistor, right? Because I'm, I'm talking about the relationship between the current uh, that is going from point one to point two and the voltage across, or the voltage difference between point one and point two. 
the current that is going from base to emitter and the voltage between base to emitter, right? Therefore, I can say that delta IBE or delta IB over delta VBE is going to GM over beta. And since this is current over voltage, I'm going to write it as a voltage over current. So delta VBE over delta IB is going to be equal to beta over GM. I'm going to going to define that so this is really a definition as r pi this is a resistor because it's a voltage over current for the same terminals and it's basically a constant voltage because i know that as long as my dc current is the same my gm is going to be the same because gm is ic over vt and uh well beta is constant for every transistor so i'm going to get a resistance out of this right so all of these results in the fact that, so this plus, let's say, let's call this asterisk. So the asterisk and these uh, analysis here, they all result in the model being tr transformed into having a base. Now I have a resistor between base and emitter. I'm going to call that R pi. And I have the same current source here. So GM, V pi. And then I have the collector and emitter. Okay. Now, the other steps would be, because I said that I have to do uh, between every, I have to do voltage differences or perturb the voltage difference between every two terminal, right? So I have to now, I did the VBE and I, I looked at the, what is the change in, like how the, how my, collector current and base current and then by association emitter current changes uh, due to this change in the VBE. Now if I keep the base voltage constant and I change collector emitter voltage, I know that since my transistor is really a current source, a voltage dependent current source, I've seen this before that when I change my collector voltage, it doesn't have any effect on any of the currents, right? So because of that, if I keep uh, basically base constant and change VCE, or you keep emitter constant and change VBC, still none of my currents are gonna change. Therefore, nothing is to be added to this model. This model is complete. So all that they, uh, all different kind of changes that were interesting to me, or like they were important to me, are modeled in this circuit. So when I'm actually analyzing my transistor, just for this small signal, uh, operation and we're going to see examples of that a lot so th i know that this is a lot to take in what are these r pi's and gm v pi and like basically it's by the way this is v pi same as before the voltage across r pi is called v pi so i know that there were a lot of definitions here but once we actually start using these uh, and we start using large signal model and small signal model and different examples you will see that all you need to do really is that when you're doing dc analysis just replace your transistor with this guy. When you're doing small signal AC analysis, replace your transistor with this guy. That's really the uh, takeaway lesson from all of these discussions, okay?